yeah, we can think on the surface, I just want to be happy all the time. And truly from the age of 14, that is what I wanted. I was like, I just want to be happy. That is all I want. I want to be normal and I want to be happy and I want to have normal things. Those, that was that was all I wanted to live my life by. But having that sense of I just want to be happy made me so miserable because any time that I wasn't happy, I was like, oh my God, I'm not happy. And the light would send me into this damage spiral. Welcome to The Balance Theory, a podcast aimed at arming you with tools and tips so that you are well equipped to not only identify and define, but own your own definition of balance. I'm your host, Erica, and thank you for joining me today. Hey, balancers, and welcome back to another episode of The Balance Theory podcast. Today's, I guess, thought of the week is very, very aligned to a lot of the content you're going to be hearing on today's episode. So, One of the things we spoke about, a little bit of a teaser for you, was the idea that when you get these negative emotions, originally you're told to just like deal with them or or put them aside, kind of forget about them. So when you're angry, when you're jealous, when you're upset, all these things you're kind of told, get over it. How familiar is it when you feel those things to think that you need to deal with them quickly and sort of privately? It's not something that you need to give airtime. But in fact, I think that's exactly what we need to do. We need to give these emotions space to surface. If not, they keep popping up and and annoying you and sort of manifesting in different parts of your life. And so through the combination of having done a little bit of therapy over the last few months and sort of just coming into my own understanding through my own self-development journey, I've really understood the power in giving these quote negative emotions space and time in sitting with them in journaling or meditating about them in really trying to question and understand why are they there. They serve a purpose. You know, they're not just there to make your day terrible or completely ruin your mood. There's a reason you're feeling those things. And if anything, they're an excellent indication that you need to pay attention to something a little bit deeper. So my challenge to everyone this week is to really sit with any negative or troubling emotions and really just try and go deeper down the rabbit hole of why. Why are you feeling those things? Where is it coming from? What is the root cause? Rather than default to thinking you need to shun them away or get kind of like embarrassed or or kind of feel like you shouldn't be feeling those things at all because it is totally human. Over the last seven days since we did the last episode, I've certainly felt all of those things plus heaps more. It's just not stuff people talk openly about on social media. So just know it is totally normal. And I think we can take this one step further in the normalization scheme of things and say we actually should give them airtime because they serve a purpose. So anyway, that's my little thought of the week and challenge. If you do give it a go or will have any thoughts about it, please DM me and let me know. But yeah, it's something I've been trying to do more recently and it's just given me a bit more of a clearer avenue to connect with myself and emotions. So as I said, this thought lends nicely to the conversation and guests that I've got on today. I've got the gorgeous Afia Salter, who is a mindset and manifestation coach. She's also the host of the Manifest Edit podcast, which I suggest you all go and check out. I'll pop a link to that in the show notes below. But basically, she's on a mission to empower and teach ambitious women how to manifest their not just lives, but extraordinary lives by overcoming limiting beliefs and finding their soul's purpose. Again, this is all tied to how to connect to your intuition. So Afia dives deep into her story from when she was orphaned at 14, grappling with mental illness and chronic pain, to then moving overseas, and how to then she started her business, through which she's inspired thousands around the world to create their lives by design. So she does do a lot of one-on-one coaching. She does speak a little bit about her courses today. So if you find you really connect with her, I'll let you know at the end of the podcast how you can reach out to her and, and I guess dive into that a little bit deeper. But she does have a free manifestation masterclass, which I've also popped below. So that's something you can get a little bit of a better feel for what you can expect if you do want to work with her further. But today you can expect a really real and raw conversation about why we need the highs and the lows. So we talk a little bit about the law of attraction, which I know a lot of you have heard about. We've spoken about it previously with other guests on the podcast. But Afia takes an interesting approach in exclaiming that, The law of attraction is not enough. And she talks about this in confluence with the law of polarity, which is the concept that we need the highs and the lows, that every up has a down, that sort of concept, which as you all know, as I profess endlessly, that balance really is a combination of all the ups and downs in our life anyway. So I totally love this part of our chat today. We also go into exactly what I opened with. So giving negative emotions airtime. We talk a little bit about why surrender is so important and actually forms part of her own programs and coaching. Of course, all things manifestation. And lastly, which I think is a little bit of a hot topic right now, the concept of toxic positivity. So I'm going to ask you a really quick question and I want you to remember the answer to it as we move through the episode. If you had to pick between self-awareness 
and positivity, which one would you choose? You're stranded on an island and you can only have one. Keep that answer in your mind as we go through and pay special attention to the toxic positivity section, especially if you're a person who feels like you always have to be positive. If you love this episode or feel like a friend or family member would greatly benefit from it, feel free to share it with them or take a screenshot of this episode, tag myself and Afia and let us know what your biggest takeaway was for today. If you haven't had a chance to jump over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review, it would mean the absolute world to me and help us continue to grow our Balancer community. I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Let's dive straight in. Gorgeous Afia, welcome to the Balancer podcast. It's such a pleasure to have you on today. And thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. So just so our listeners can get a little bit of a feel for who you are and what you do, why don't you share a little bit about your personal story? I know you've had quite a journey um, to date, so I'd love for you to share that. And then I guess tell us a little bit about what you're doing with yourself at the moment. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm probably going to do this a little bit backwards and tell you where I'm at now and then how I got there. So I am a mindset and manifestation coach for ambitious women. And really, I'm about helping them to manifest their extraordinary lives. And I do this through one-on-one coaching and courses. And this line of work really came to me through my own struggles definitely growing up. I was adopted at three and I was later orphaned at 14. And I would really look around at the lives of all my friends in school and all my peers. And I was like, okay, all I want is for my life to be normal. I just want to have what my friends are having. I just want to have the same experiences that they're having. And I just want to be able to have the same opportunities that they're having, but also at the back of my mind, knowing that I was going to work, have to work a little bit harder to have the same things as everyone else. And so I grew up with this mentality of just wanting to have what everyone else had, which served me to a point. But then I realized that I didn't just want that. I didn't just want to stay in the small town that I was living in forever, like no shade, but it just wasn't really for me. I had bigger dreams. Um, I wanted to travel the world and do things I hadn't necessarily seen my friends doing. And that really encouraged me to not just think of having a normal life, but having an extraordinary life. And what would that look like? And what would that feel like? And what would it be like to step into that? And that was really my journey from normal to extraordinary and almost making my extraordinary my new normal. And in that journey of self-discovery myself, there were definitely some challenges. I struggled with anxiety. I struggled with depression. I also have um, endometriosis, which is a chronic inflammation illness. And I had that undiagnosed for seven years. So I was struggling with all this chronic pain and no idea what was wrong with me and doctors just saying yeah you're fine nothing's wrong here when I knew like deep down something was wrong so really coming to terms with my own sense of power my own sense of authority led me to empowering other women to do the same to encourage other women to stop settling for what they think is possible and to start thinking outside the realms of probability to what they truly desire Love that. And it's beautiful that it's sort of organically come out of your own experience. But um, if we just tap into, I guess, those early days where you, I guess, naturally were just drawn to, can we say maybe manifestation or big dreaming, stuff like that. Did you find you had like any rituals or habits at the time that just sort of naturally became a part of your day to day that sort of helped you on that journey? So from the age of nine, I would say onwards, we actually grew up Buddhist. So meditation and spiritual practices were quite normal from a young age. And we actually grew up next to the largest Tibetan monastery in Europe. Wow! So we'd like hop over our back garden fence and then be in the monastery. And we'd spend like our weekends hanging out with the monks and nuns. And it was just normal for us. And it wasn't until I got to high school that uh other kids were like yeah that's that's a little bit strange that's not really normal (laughs) um but to me it was normal to us it was normal and growing up in that small town it was a very um community-based experience so as I got older and approaching it from a lens of conscious manifestation and personal development it wasn't things that were so far away to me Mm. it was like yeah this this makes sense this is like things I'm kind of used to learning about and although religion and spirituality are obviously separate there are a lot of crossovers so for me it was like okay for religion there is definitely like more of a prescription of rules that everyone sort of tends to follow whereas spirituality is like what things apply to me and how can these fit into my life so that was how I approached it from and when I say older I mean like 20. Yeah no that's awesome I always think like if I had 
or if my parents had kind of made me do like a meditation practice growing up, like how that would impact me now that I've, you know, sort of found it in my later years and it's a practice I'm trying to get on top of. But that's really cool that you had it from a, a very, very young age. So I guess on this topic, we talk about a lot on the podcast and in the in the lens of the balance theory that it, it, it is comprised of ups and downs. It's the, I'm not making any claim in any episode that, you know, balance is this perfect neutral state that you're always in. It really is the, the lows and the highs that that form your balance and it's just about you know riding those waves out and I know you speak about the law of polarity which plays nicely into this concept so I would love to hear your thoughts on that and how it I guess works with our framework because I feel like in a realm of you know social media people are always just posting the good stuff and I mean I definitely do that I'm not going to post when I've just had the absolute worst day um, that just doesn't seem post worthy to me but I think there's an element of us needing to be honest about or at least appreciating that social media is just the highs. Um, and I think if you can accept that for what it is, then that's fine. But I, I think it's important to really discuss that life is a combination of all these, you know, frantic moments. Absolutely. I think there is a danger when it comes to spiritual practices or tools or even manifestation that people can look even at maybe a profile such as myself, although I do try and incorporate the challenges in there as well, but they might see all the wins like, wow, you manifested this incredible thing and you're looking around and you're seeing all these people manifesting all the wins, but you're not seeing the journey. You're not seeing the shadow work and the tears for days on end. And you're like, where will this end? You know, you're not seeing all of that, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. And I think you should know that for anybody who's reached for really big goals, there have absolutely been challenges in their way. There have actually been absolutely been things up him out of the comfort zone you know even with my almost origin story all of those difficult challenges from a young age like have definitely shaped me into the person who I am today but that's not to say that they weren't hard or that there aren't moments now like on mother's days or father's days where I'm like man I wish like I had someone to share that moment and celebrate with and that doesn't mean like I'm doing something wrong or that I'm any less of a person that means I'm a normal human being having a human experience and while we are multi-dimensional human beings, we are we we have emotions, and these emotions serve as a purpose. These emotions keep us alive, and these emotions add to the depth of life. Like, yeah, we can think on the surface, oh, I just want to be happy all the time. And truly, from the age of fourteen, that is what I wanted. I was like, I just want to be happy. That is all I want. I want to be normal, and I want to be happy, and I want to have normal things. Those, that was that was all I wanted to live my life by. But having that sense of I just want to be happy made me so miserable because any time that I wasn't happy, I was like, oh my god, I'm not happy, and the like would send me into this damn spiral and I remember the first time I actually went to the doctors and I think this was a year after my mom passed away I was like hey yeah like I'm having trouble sleeping so if you just want to give me some sleeping pills that would be great and um before like giving me the medication she's like okay I just want to have a little chat with you first and she's chatting with me she's like okay I think this is a bit deeper than um insomnia I think you have depression I'm like depression no I'm like I'm a happy person I'm happy I'm happy all the time this is my thing um and picking the pressure on myself to be so happy all the time actually led to going the opposite way and that can happen when we try and resist what we're truly feeling in favor of what we think we should be feeling and so for me my life now even as a manifestation coach is not about manifesting happiness manifesting joy all the time is about manifesting fulfillment and I know that in manifesting fulfillment there are absolutely going to be times where I'm disappointed I'm challenged where things don't work out the way that I wanted them to but that is a needed part of the journey in order to get me to where I want to go well I love that and you've sort of answered my next question which was so now if you manifest happiness how do you sort of how do you qualify that um, you know and allow for these sorts of moments so you you then teach people to manifest fulfillment right? And I love that because that's actually our third area of balance. And I specifically didn't call it work or career or anything like that, because I think there are so many things that can be fulfilling. Like this podcast for me is fulfilling, but it's not my job. It's not my nine to five. So um, I love that you've called it that. So how do you then, um, I guess, take people through that journey so that they can, you know, ride the waves or or mentally prepare for those moments? Because there's one thing to be like, yeah, okay, I know they're going to come. But then it's like, you know, if you're on on this journey, like whatever it is, business goal, personal goal, and you do have those crappy days, like how do you sort of help circumvent and navigate that? I think the first thing is a lot of people will attribute manifestation to positivity and I just have to be positive all of the time and then my dreams and my desires will manifest. And for me, 
that is not the way that I like to teach mindset and manifestation practices. That's not what I live by. And that's not what I tell to other people either, because I don't think it's sustainable. And I think, you know, when you are trying to stay at this state of high highs all the time, then those crashes are inevitably lower. And when those crashes do come, it's not just the feeling sad, the angry, the jealous, whatever emotions that are typically in inverted commas negative, but it's also the feelings of guilt and shame around, I shouldn't be feeling this emotion. So when yeah. you try and resist the emotions that you're actually feeling, these are actually coming out in a much bigger way. So it's not about staying positive for me the two in fact three most important things when it comes to manifestation mindset practices self-awareness um self-compassion and responsibility taking responsibility for your life like when you are aware of your emotions just being aware of them like what's coming up for you okay i'm feeling this emotion right now why is this emotion coming up how can i do like is it something that you want to shift is it something that you need to sit with for a moment sometimes you need to like sit with emotions sometimes like you know, there's this misconception like, oh, when the bad emotion comes up, I need to get rid of it Im immediately. No, you need to actually be comfortable in having these emotions and feeling these emotions. Because if you're just like getting rid of it all the time, then when something absolutely devastating does happen, you're not going to know how to sit with that. You're not going to know how to hold that space for yourself. So you need to hold space for yourself when you are in the down moments by just being aware of your emotions, by having compassion for yourself and saying, yeah, you know what? I'm a human being and I wish I didn't get angry at that guy for cutting me off on the road, but I did. <laughs> I'm human. It happens. Big deal. You know what I mean? And just having yeah. that kind of attitude towards life rather than like obsessing over the details because obsessing over the details is ultimately what leads to um, those negative emotions popping up while well, seemingly negative emotions. Yeah, no, I love this chat and it's very refreshing, you know, to hear because when you hear about manifestation, it is all like the sparkles and the glam and the positivity and it does sort of, you know, negate all of those real life experiences that we do have day to day. And it's kind of like when people are setting goals, if you set yourself some big goal to start with, like you've never done meditation, for example, I'm just picking a random example now and you go, okay, I'm going to do 20 minutes every day and you've never started you know, the first one or two days that you don't stick to that, you're going to feel so disheartened. And so I feel like it's sort of the same thing. If you're, if you've got this goal, but you're not allowing for the new, the nuances of day-to-day -day life or the fact that things aren't going to be like perfect all the time, like you can really get knocked off your, your chair or your, or your process straight away. But I think as well, like everything you were just saying, then just, just brought to mind, like a, a recent personal experience I've had that I, I'd love to share. So I have been doing therapy for a couple of weeks now um, with this brilliant, brilliant therapist. And um, I had these sort of negative thoughts that kept bothering me. They kept popping up, kept popping up. And just like you said, when they did, I was like, oh, I shouldn't be feeling that. I shouldn't be thinking that. And just tried to like block it out and, you know, focus on my breathing and, and do all those things that make you just stay in the zone. But what I was actually doing was I was not giving those emotions like space and time to just air. I wasn't giving them the compassion they needed. I wasn't letting them come to the surface. And so, of course, they were continuously going to keep bothering me. And so I think what you've just said then and, and just, you know, coupled with my recent experience, it's very important to just sit with those emotions, just give them the airtime. If not, they will just compound. And then you see it sort of latching on to different life experiences you have. So stuff that's popping up for me now, you know, occurred in events that happened years and years ago. And then I saw it happen in, you know, an event two years ago and then an event more recently. And I can see the carryover because I haven't sat and just given those emotions airtime because we're just not taught when you're growing up, when you feel angry or annoyed or, you know, disappointed, you need to just sit and let it process. You're taught, no, you shouldn't feel that way, block it out. So I love that this forms part of your coaching. I think it's very refreshing and, you know, for, for people to understand that that's just, just a part of life. So I might just circle back to um, what I was asking you about the law of polarity. Can you just explain to me, I guess, um, what that means in the context, I guess, of what we've just discussed? Yeah, absolutely. So in manifestation, people are most commonly introduced to it by the law of attraction, which is popularized by the film or the book, The Secret. And in the law of attraction, it's like thoughts become things and you can um, manifest your thoughts into reality and everyone picks up this idea and runs with it. And then later on, when things aren't manifesting the way that they want them to, they're like, oh, well, I just thought about something. Why hasn't it become my thing yet? because there are actually several universal laws um, and one of those universal laws is the law of polarity or the law of duality in that every it's like a magnet every positive has a negative and every up has a down and you can think about success you know so many people will picture the success like when I get that million dollars I'll be happy or when I get that new home they'll be happy but there's still going to be challenges that come with it right and I mean I've never bought a house but my sister's gone through the process and I can see what she's gone through and like when you're buying a house it's like amazing and exciting but it's like oh are they going to accept all these forms oh my goodness I have to go through so many 
many processes to do this and like there is a downside of that even having a million dollars like you hear of lottery winners and all of their friends try and take advantage of them or they don't have a money mindset so they don't know how to sit with all that money and then they lose all of that money like every positive does have like a negative and you have to be prepared for that and know that that is part of sitting with it you have to be prepared to deal with both of those things and you have to be able to sit with both those things and something else that you said about um having those um emotions come up for you is it really is a radical act of self-love to love yourself through whatever you're feeling because if you're saying to yourself i only love myself when i'm presenting happy i only love myself when i'm feeling joy that is not a like good way to be home in your body to be home in your soul yeah no like i I totally love everything you've said and very very Mm -hmm. key to our whole concept of balance you know same sort of thing you can't just have this false perception that everything is going to be linear all the time so it it is really really important um even when you're goal setting making those plans to have this this notion that you know things have a positive and a negative and i guess with with more success and more things comes more you always hear it comes more problems more challenges and it's all just a learning learning process so i think it's it's cool to be very very aware of that but if we loop back to the law of attraction so obviously that that concept that if you think something it will then you know come to be i know that your um, whole approach is that it's not enough to manifest our dreams which is interesting because i i have had and and this is not to discount anything anyone else has said on the podcast but i have had people on that are firm believers of the law of attraction and I'm sure we've got a lot of listeners as well that hold that quite firmly um, you know in their core belief system so I'm curious to hear I guess why you think perhaps it's not adequate as a manifestation tool and if so what you know what is enough what what can we do to make that more um, I guess useful for us in our day-to-day lives really great question Uh, and I think for me it comes down to the fact that it's not all encompassing it's like you're not giving someone the full picture it's like you've just like ripped out one page of a book and given it to someone and it's like yeah run with that and then people have like all of those doubts coming in like well okay but how how is this thought actually becoming a thing like do I just think about it for enough times like do I just visualize it for enough times like what do I actually need to do and I think people like trip over like um contextualizing it not just on the spiritual perspective but on the strategic perspective right because most of us are strategic people we need to know the when the how all of these details and just the law of attraction alone isn't enough to fill in those doubts and gaps that may come up for us so i think the full process of manifestation number one begins with understanding a definition of manifestation a lot of people will go into manifestation without a definition of what they're actually doing which can lead to problems so for me manifestation is yes about the process of taking a thought into thing but looking at it from like a formulaic perspective of okay I have a thought in my mind of something that I would like to happen. Just that thought in your mind of something that you'd like to happen isn't enough. So like, what is the missing piece between that thought in your head actually becoming something you can hold or something that you can experience in your 3D reality? And that missing piece, that missing piece, that everything that goes on in between is the manifestation process. That is the visualizations. That is the spiritual practices. That is the actually taking action on what you want to happen. Because part of manifestation is the law of action. It's actually taking action. And so many people will... And this isn't to shade anyone because I was absolutely this person myself is just thinking like, cool, all I need to do is visualize it and it's going to happen. No, Mm. visualizing is part of the process that's going to enable you to make it happen. And so when we request our desires, when there's things that we want to manifest, we ask the universe for it, we set the intention, we say, yes, this is what I want to have happen. Boom. The universe hears you the first time, but everything else that you're doing, all of the practices, all the things that you're doing is about convincing yourself that you can do it. It's about convincing yourself that it's going to happen no matter what. It's about undoing all those patterns, those limits limiting beliefs, those limiting stories, so you could move forward. And what a lot of people don't realize is that 95% of our mental lives are run by our subconscious minds. So while on a conscious level, at your conscious 5%, you can be like, this is why I want to manifest, this is why I want to make it happen. And a month later, you're like looking around like, okay, I don't feel like any closer to what I've said I actually want to be creating is because there's a disconnect between your conscious and your subconscious mind. So really what I see spiritual tools and practices or whatever you use is bridging the gap between your subconscious and conscious mind to allow them to come together. And it allows you to really understand what stories am I holding in my subconscious mind? Because we have strategies for like literally everything in your life. You have a strategy for how you brush your teeth, for how you tie your shoes and all of that is unconscious. And if you have those unconscious stories, what other unconscious stories do you have going on below the surface that you're not even remotely aware of? So manifestation 
a lot of it is about understanding the the darkness the shadow aspects and when we talk about shadow it's really about your subconscious mind like we touched on before it's not about like these are bad things about you it's just about having a deeper understanding of yourself and how you show up in the world and if you do have stories that you're not happy with and if you do have stories that aren't conducive to your success that's not a bad thing it's actually a gift because when you understand what those stories are and when you understand why they exist you can change them and you can create new ones yeah, I love that. And the whole, you know, topic of, of diving into your subconscious and understanding that I think scares a lot of people, but having done it myself, you, I think you come to appreciate these things that you viewed negatively once to, and be like, you know, with, without those things happening, I actually wouldn't be where I am today with the lessons I've learned today with the things I want. And, and I think when it does come to things that are, you know, quote negative in your life like it is an opportunity for you to understand okay maybe that's the kind of thing that I don't want so everything is a gift to some to some degree but you're right like when it's all locked and stored in your mind that's when these limiting beliefs can you know form and then really start holding you back and and people are thinking well I want all these things like I have I am happy you know like you said before like but I'm a happy person like I want to be happy I'm always happy I'm always trying to be happy but then it's like you're right there is this disconnect so what kind of um what kind of tips or spiritual practices maybe can just give us an example of a few do you help your clients uh with in in terms of bridging that gap between the conscious and the subconscious yeah so two main ones for me are absolutely meditation so we'll start with meditation and for me you know like I touched on before that I meditate from a young age but I actually really hated it I actually despised it from a young age I found it very challenging and going to the temple and meditating was a very stressful time for me because I would sit there thinking like don't think of anything don't I thought something don't think of anything and it would be like this battle between myself and I'm like nine ten years old so this is you know it's challenging for an adult never mind a child yeah. uh, and I really thought that it was about emptying your minds of thoughts and I was like how how is this even possible? And I'm quite deep thinker anyway. So all my mind was just like going over and over and over again. It was just like running at a thousand miles an hour. So revisiting meditation as an adult and actually seeing it not as a means of getting rid of your thoughts, but just having focused time of just having intentional time of silence. And in that silence, there are inevitably going to be thoughts because that's what your brain is programmed to do. That is how we exist. And if there were no thoughts at all, then maybe actually you would be worried. So meditation (laughs) isn't about the lack of thought and coming to that realization is so freeing and it allows it to be such a powerful tool so for me in 2019 was when i really began to uh revisit meditation again i was going through a period of anxiety i was like oh you know what like i feel like i (laughs) have exhausted many options why don't we just give this like meditation thing a go for like a week let's just try it for a week uh and i did it for a week having taken this new approach to it and it was amazing i loved it i did it every day i felt more creative i had more ideas i felt less stressed and i felt calm and i felt really connected to my intuition so it's like okay what if we didn't just do this for a week but what if we kept it going and i think today i'm at the point where it's been 650 days where i've meditated every day in the morning and it's it's completely and utterly transformed the way that i show up in the world it's completely transformed the way i communicate the way that i solve problems and for my clients as well it does that same it just gives you a pause it gives you a breather and meditation can be different things to different people it might be taking meditative moments in the shower it might be walking around outside mindfully not you know checking your phone every five minutes meditation might be just like a minute to breathe in the middle of the day what meditation is truly about is about connection to yourself about connection to your intuition because our intuition holds all of those answers but we're never taught to look out for that intuition voice so if you do hear it it's so quiet that you're like "Mm, just push that way don't really know what that is let's just ignore that voice but when you follow your intuition like that's when the magic happens that's when you get like all of these like intuitive nudges to do things and it makes like absolutely no sense but you're like okay I'm going to follow this intuition voice and see where it leads and it leads to incredible places so meditation is absolutely one of the tools that I will suggest to my clients and students and it's not something where I'm like right you have to have an hour meditation practice every day and you're going to have to do it the next 650 days this is your life it's like okay let's start small let's start with just like five minutes minutes in the morning and let's see where we go from there and it really is really transformative and then another one of the tools I really love is journaling and again I had an interesting relationship with journaling uh I was like I'm in my 20s like I'm too old for a dear diary like this isn't for me (laughs) you know uh and that was really my attitude to it until 
really last year was when I got super into journaling and I was, this was actually in the middle of COVID and I would lost my job due to COVID and I was like life is terrible and I was kind of journaling about this which was something I'd never done before but I was like I need somewhere to vent and I can't see anyone so this is what I'm going to do and I got out like a notebook and a pen and I'm like just kind of um you know writing about my life how tragic everything is and it's like for like a week and I just write like what have you actually done though and it was very confrontational because it was a question I'd never really thought to ask myself and when I answered the question I hadn't done anything to change my situation I would just been like moaning about the situation but I hadn't actually taken any action to change anything I was like what <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah I was like what this is what's really going on like because the other thing as well is sometimes we think we know reasons at a surface level but when you really go to write down you're like oh this is what's really going on and that journaling allowing my thoughts to get like out of my head and onto paper Mm -hmm. allowed me to see what was truly going on they allowed me to see see the truth of my situation and obviously you know no one wants to be in a pandemic but I hadn't taken any actions to change my situation and through journaling I was able to make that commitment to myself and I went from you know a couple of income streams and my income vanishing overnight to over the past year manifesting 11 different income streams to manifesting all of these incredible experiences in a new apartment and stick or lockdown when you can only leave the house for an hour a week right an hour a day sorry um and you know manifesting all of these outwardly amazing things what most importantly was the connection to myself like the level of understanding I have of myself how I operate how I communicate how I behave in relationships is is life-changing and that is something that I love to do with my clients is when we're working together one-on-one after every session I will give them journal prompts that will allow them to go deeper into themselves because it's not about me saying like okay we're going to work together and I'm going to give you the answers to all of your problems it's like no I'm going to lead you to this place inside of yourself where you are going to be able to solve those things for yourself it's where you're going to know that challenges are going to come up but you have the self-awareness of being able to sit with those challenges and know what that means for you and it's being able to understand those stories and really get to the truth of you and both of these practices as well relating to the subconscious mind that we touched on before when you just wake up and just before you go to sleep your brain waves are significantly lower you have the theta you have delta and you have alpha brain waves and through meditation you are allowed to bring your brain waves down from where they're traditionally sitting at to a much lower level which allows you to access your subconscious mind and when you're in that subconscious state that is where you can impress ideas upon yourself that is the prime time for visualizing that is a prime time for journaling because you have access to what's really going on in your life at a like a, a deep level and i last year i took a course in neurolinguistic programming which was also incredibly transformative and i learned that uh, which was like one of the biggest things I learned from the course and it's probably the most simple is that everything that has ever happened to you in your life you still remember at your subconscious level like even though you think at a conscious level yeah I've like forgotten about things like that kid that bullied you when you're five years old you still hold on to that you still cling on to that and your subconscious mind keeps all of these things and stores them away to bring out at any opportune moment and it's not like your subconscious mind is trying to sabotage you but actually your subconscious mind is trying to protect you so it's like how can I find new ways to keep me safe that also allow me to move closer to what I want than keeping me stuck where I am. Yeah, for sure. And all of this is great to hear because I think um, a lot of the time we think if we get help from other people like a therapist or like a coach like yourself, um, you know, we're sort of relying on the other person to help us do the work. But I think it's important to remember that they are just like a guide or a prompter for yourself to do the inner work. It's all about you really going in deep. And, and I can honestly say from having started my own meditation practice, like it's certainly what it does allow you to do. Um, but just on, if we go back to like the the concept of manifesting. So if someone's listening at the moment and perhaps they have a really avid visualization um, practice um, or or perhaps like manifesting and visualizing is something they want to get into, what would be like a couple non-negotiable tips you would have when, when you think it comes to like setting yourself a goal through manifestation? So for me, when it comes to manifestation, um, (laughs) so many stories, but, um, 2018 I created this vision board and I thought I was a vision board pro I'd created one in 2016 and I had manifested my um, soulmate at the time travel graduate my second degree and I was like yes this vision board stuff I'm like I'm on my game (laughs) and when it came to 2018 I was like yes let's like put all the things on here 
And I looked back on it in 2020, I looked back at this vision board that I created in 2018 and not a single thing on this vision board to come true. I was like, how has this happened? Like I did all the things, I looked at the vision board, I was manifesting. Um, And when I really sat down to think about it, actually what I realized was that I had been trying to manifest these things from a place of should or necessity or, okay, this is like, I feel kind of behind in my life. You know, everyone at home is like buying houses, getting married, and I've been traveling overseas. And I put all of these things on there that I felt like would make me at the level that I should, in inverted commas, be at, at my age. And I looked at that and it was truly like maybe one or two things I truly actually deeply wanted. And all of the other things were just out of like a, necess- like a necessity or a should. So when I realized that, what I also understood was that so many people will begin the manifestation process at setting an intention, but you shouldn't begin from setting an intention. And this actually led me to creating a five-step framework for manifestation. And so the first step of this framework is actually embodying the vibe of your next level self or your highest level self. And that's thinking about your vision and your values before you go into setting an intention. Because once you know your vision and your values, then you can like gut check your intention against like, is this what a highest level highest self version of me would want is this what i does this align with my values and when whereas when you don't do that and you just set intentions of oh i saw this girl on instagram like manifested ten thousand dollars i want to manifest ten thousand dollars it's like does that actually align with what you want you might want more than that you might want twenty thousand dollars and that would feel really good to you you might just want the five thousand dollars because you want like less things or you just want to have that smaller amount of money you know it's about what do i truly want and connecting with also when i say like yeah exactly and when i say like embodying your highest level self or your next level self that isn't to say like the current you is not good enough uh you need to get rid of that version um your highest level self your next level self is actually who you truly are it's who you already are underneath all of those like this is who i should be this is how i should present to the world this is the perceptions that people should have of me your highest level self is already within you it's just about pulling away all the things that have been placed on top of it to really connect to that Um, And then building an intention from that place is so much more powerful because you can see this is the vision that I'm creating for my future. And it feels completely different setting an intention from that place when you're thinking of your grander vision, your grander purpose. Um, Then from there, it's moving into your limiting beliefs and how to release those, but also getting comfortable with finding out what they are. It's clearing those energetic blocks that you have in your way. And it's also um, releasing those energetic boundaries and creating boundaries in your life because a lot of the time we have terrible boundaries it's something that we never learned in school like all right kids you're coming today to learn all about that we don't have that no one has that um and especially particularly for women i think there can be a challenge in enforcing boundaries and what healthy boundaries look like and being assertive without being like oh um are people going to misconstrue me are Mm. they going to think i'm this type of way if i enforce these healthy boundaries in my life From there, it's about balancing your feminine and masculine energy so you can take inspired action. And that's actually, you know, connecting with your intuition, like I talked about with meditation and journaling so that you can act from a place that feels really good for you. Again, you know, going back to the balance theory, it's not necessarily a 50-50 split. Balance is never necessarily 50-50. It's about what works for you. What is your balance? And for me, I feel most empowered when I'm mainly in my feminine energy, but for a lot of people, it might be their masculine energy. And so as a result, I attract people into my life who are mainly in their masculine energy. Um, And then the final step of that framework is surrender. And it's about overcoming those doubts, both in the universe and doubts that you have about your power to manifest things, about your self-worth, about, is it possible for me? I know it's possible for other people, but is it possible Mm. for me? And of course in life there's also there's always going to be like a small element of doubt so it's not about you can't have any doubt at all but it's about like how can i just bring those levels of doubt down to a level where they don't hold me back from pursuing my dreams and i think when people can look at those steps of the framework and say okay like where can i lean into surrender a bit more how do i feel most in my power and it's really about this journey of self-discovery at its core that is what manifestation is about is about number one like finding out what do you want what do you create in the world how can I create that in the world and what's holding me back from creating it how can I overcome those yeah beautiful and you're not the first person to talk about this notion of you know really sitting and understanding who you are and what you want before you sort of set yourself these intentions and goals and manifestations and visualizations like so many people have come on and said it even in terms of like defining your balance what does that what does that mean to you you know have to work out and get in touch with that you know pulling the curtain away from what society expects of you or what all your friends and family have done. Like that is so important because when you get quiet with yourself, 
that's when you can really tap into what truly is going to fuel you. And I love the surrender piece as well, because it does acknowledge the fact that, you know, just, just because you go on a self-discovery journey or you become a manifestation pro, let's say, or, you know, you're really in touch with the intuition. It doesn't mean that these limiting beliefs or these feelings of doubt or, or negative, you know, quote negative beliefs aren't going to come up. It means you're going to have a different relationship with them, right? It means you'll be able to sit with them. You'll be able to respect them for what they are and really just, you know, work out what's going on rather than respond to them or, or get aggressive when they come up or just like let them compound until they're just like really far down that it's it becomes more and more difficult so I love that that's an acknowledgement piece as well and again just really honors the fact that life is the up and down law of polarity exists and and that's just how things are and it's just about your perspective and relationship with them so I love everything that you've said there and I'm gonna have to chat to you at the end of this podcast about doing your course because it just sounds incredible like and I can't wait to share it with other people as well um before I do let you go, though, there is something I wanted to ask you, and that is this concept of toxic positivity, which I know is circulating a lot on Instagram right now. Um, and I know it's something you speak about a lot as well. So I would love to hear, I guess, uh, you, you share a little bit about what it means and, and how people can th- start thinking about it in their day to day lives. So toxic positivity is really about thinking that in order to have the things that you want, in order to be successful, in order to be liked, in order to manifest your desires, that you have to maintain the state of positivity, that you have to be happy about everything that happens to you and that you just have to keep this level of positive all of the time. And like we kind of touched on with the law of polarity, that it's just not possible to maintain this level at all times. And also you wouldn't be able to grow if you were constantly in this state of positivity right and I think where it can become toxic is where you are beating yourself up about not staying in that area about not staying in that zone and about spiritually bypassing your like over like you know overlooking your emotions about not speaking up about important issues or political issues because you think it's not going to fit in with your spiritual vibe that you're showing up online as I think something else that's really important is when it comes to toxic positivity is not putting people on pedestals, right? Not the people that you look up to aren't positive all of the time either. And the people that you look up to still have problems. They still have stuff going on in your life that you probably don't know about. The stuff that even, you know, they may share a little bit and you may have a little bit of an insight into their world. Everyone has stuff going on. And when you put people on pedestals, that makes you feel like less than, that makes you feel like you're enough. That makes you feel like you'll never be enough. And for as long as you attribute your success and your level of happiness to you know, being at a level that other people have rather than understanding your own internal balance and your own internal values, you will never be fulfilled. You will always feel not enough. You will never feel worthy. And the truth is you're innately worthy just because you exist, just because you were born, you're worthy and deserving of the success, the love, the desires, everything you ever want, you are already worthy of that. And there's nothing that you can do that will change that. Yeah, for sure. And and actually on the contrary too, I think if you are grounded in who you are and what you want, then you won't be you know, worried about other people's journeys. You, you, have, you feel like you, you get this grown like respect for other people's journeys because when you realize how complex you are and your process and all the things that have happened to you, you kind of have this empathy that extends to other people because you have no idea what happened to them when they were five, six, seven years old, you know, and how that's played into their beliefs about the world or other people or themselves now. So it is this nice sort of wholesome journey. Um, but if I had to ask you the question now, and I think anyone listening will probably know the answer given our discussion just, just before, if you had to choose between being self-aware or positive, which one should be prioritized? Because if, if people are sitting here, thinking, yeah. you know, they have to pick one or the other. I think, you know, what you're saying is quite important. Yeah, self-aware every single time, every single time. Like the journey of self-awareness is ongoing. It is not always easy. It is often uncomfortable. It can be really confronting, but it is incredibly important. And actually, I'd love to recommend a book here. Uh, It's called Existential Kink by Carolyn Elliott. And it's all about shadow work and your shadow self and embracing these darker aspects of yourself that you think you have to hide away from the world and just accepting like that's who I am sometimes I do things to maybe get attention sometimes I do things to maybe make people feel this way and reading that book is really just like comforting to know that you're not the only one that thinks that way and Mm. I think a lot of the times when we get so wrapped up in ourselves we can think it's just me or I'm different from everyone else when actually there are so many ways that we're all connected while at the same time being completely unique. Yeah, I'll have to write that down. I always love a good book suggestion. But um, it, it is an interesting thing to think about because I think sometimes that that feeling of you always have to be positive or happy, you know, it often um, crosses your 
your barriers and your boundaries, you know, and you end up, or I know for myself personally, if I've chosen to be positive or happy over my self-awareness and what innately I want to do, often that means I'm going down like a people pleasing sequence or, you know, I've lowered my boundaries and then, you know, you just go so far from where you actually want to be. So it's important to understand that, you know, self-awareness is not an easy road. It's not, um, it's not always fun either, but I think it's super critical to making sure you live a life that's truly purposeful and, and right for you, not right for anybody else. It's not what your parents want for you. It's not what school has said you have to do or be or society or whatever. And, and you can change that. And the thing, the beautiful thing about having this closeness, I think with your self-awareness is that you can, you can be comfortable with the flexibility that comes with it. And that is it can chop and change. You might want something different in a decade to what you want right now. And that's cool. And it's the same thing with balance, right? Like when you become a parent or when significant life events happen that change the course of of your life and direction, you need to be comfortable with being flexible with the things that you're used to or the rituals and practices that you do or the things you love doing, you know, they're all going to chop and change, but maintaining that connection. I think, I think the, the biggest thing I've taken, I guess, from everything you've said today is really just getting into a place where you can be close with your intuition, be close with that inner voice and be close with that subconscious so that, you know, when things do change, it's not this disruptive, frantic kind of negative experience, but rather one that you're observing and growing and learning with. And and I think that's just life. And the closer we can get to, you know, being comfortable in that state of change, I think the easier it becomes to do things like manifesting or setting goals and really just living our best lives. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for anyone, I guess, who wants to connect with you a little bit further, maybe, you know, suss out your programs or ask you some questions, where's the best place that they can do so? So you can find me at my podcast, The Manifest Edit, over on Instagram, Afiasalta underscore. And I will also be leaving a link for the show notes, which is a free manifestation masterclass, which goes more in depth to each of those um, steps of the five step framework I talked about. It talks about some manifestation archetypes and really gives you a definition of what manifestation actually looks like. And it's packed with loads of stories so you know how to practically apply it to your life as well. So. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I'll drop your Instagram, your podcast and your website as well. And the link to that, um, the free masterclass as well. So everyone can connect with you a little bit further. I know we've only been able to just scrape the surface, I guess, of the work you do, but definitely connecting with on socials is a good way to, I guess, stay in the loop um, and understand a little bit more about you as a person and what you're doing professionally. So I'm really excited to see, I guess, what you're going to manifest over the next 12 months. Um, And I'm really keen as well to work with you moving forward. So it was really, really nice chatting today. And I know our listeners would have gotten so much out of it. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And that's a wrap for this week, Balancers. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this episode useful to some degree in either steering or determining your definition of balance today. As always, the biggest compliment for us is if you share this episode with someone who you feel might need it, or if you're on Spotify, you can click follow or on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a rating or review. If you have any suggestions for up and coming podcasts, feel free to shoot us a DM or an email. Our Instagram is at the balance theory and our email is the balance theory podcast at gmail.com. Otherwise, you've always got the option of subscribing to our mailing list. We only send you email reminders when the episodes drop so you get them fresh out of the oven. No annoying spam, we promise. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and until next time, stay balanced.